part two of our Carrera Digital Slot Car Back to the Future conversion video coming up next. Hello once again, Slot Car fans. This is a crazy doctor down here at the Monster Hobbies Lab, ready to bring you part two of our Back to the Future slot car conversion video for our Carrera slot car. Now it's been a while since I made a video, but as you may remember, we were showing you how to get about building this great conversion. So now let's go down to Trevor on the bench where he'll continue with this amazing project. All right, so what I've done here is I've taken and I ground out the front wheel arches and I was going to cut this piece out of here just to allow these big pins and everything to move up. However, <laughs> I've been test fitting this and I've discovered that maybe all my work is, <laughs> I don't know if it's in vain or what, because as you can see here, the body is just like that one millimeter too short. So everything is hitting up here in the front and right there in the back. Now, the one thing I can do is continue to grind this until this is <laughs> oval shaped enough to fit the wheels in. But really that's still a minor problem because just the way this Carrera flat pan sits and the way the DeLorean kicks up at the front and kicks up at the back and all this other stuff, there's nothing to attach this to end to end. Even chopping this to muck around with, I'm getting nowhere, or I would get nowhere. Cutting this area out, I just cut a gap into the car because this thing wants to sit dead flat on the bottom, of course. I've gotten in a bit too deep to put this back on the Porsche and just call it a day because I chopped off the towers in the back as well as shortened it up. <sighs> you know, you get into these projects and all of a sudden you get caught in traps. The other thing about this is <laughs> Carrera designed this with a plastic that doesn't glue to anything. It's one of those deals, you know? And I'm pretty sure Polar Lights did the same thing with the body here in order to plate it with this special um, stainless steel. Like it's actually copper plated and then it's steel plated. So this thing is a real... They're both cool cars in their own rights, but when you try to merge the two together, that's where all the problems come in. One thing is if I could take this chassis here and just cut out about a millimeter out of it, chop it into two pieces and then put it back together just to tighten it, just to get these wheels to move inward this way and this way, just enough to uh, get the tires dead center because again Carrera is using these big monstrous tires that were not designed for the DeLorean of course. On a chassis where you can't just pull these things off and pop DeLorean wheels on there. Um, with sunken in bits to keep this all nice and low to the ground so it's not sitting up in the air in any way shape or form. Nothing that I can just say okay new chassis here we go move all these parts in on the new chassis whatever so I gotta try to figure this out and the only thing I can think of is to cut it in here and then somehow screw this into the back. Uh, here hang on a minute. So here I have this evergreen styrene plastic rod in here, but this of course is styrene. The rest of this is ABS. I could use some ABS glue on here, but again, I don't know if it's going to hold on here or just sit there and the first time this falls on the floor or whatever, shear the body right in half. It's one of these crappy deals you end up getting into, a, a brick wall, an impasse, you know? Everything starts to go good, and then bang, there you are, messed up, impasse, no way to get around it. Bringing the body down lower, of course, makes the wheel arches hit these gigantic fat tires. Like I say, I'd have to basically chop the body there and there and have the wheels go right up in top here and up through the top of the hood just to get this to fit and hide inside. You know, it's 
doing these conversions, sometimes this is just how it all goes. But like, I don't know, if I could get this here, a higher, taller piece or something, I could, I don't know, there's just nothing to do any of this with. See, even underneath, if I screwed this down into that plastic, which would be a logical choice, the screw heads could be sitting up higher than the bottom of this thing and start dragging along the ground. Uh, so the other way is to put a screw down this way, you know, down there and down there. But again, will the screw head now start grinding into the rubber? Or screw it from this way and this way. But then you kind of need two screws here and two there so that the body doesn't start doing this, or the frame, I mean. Uh, but yet, if this was made out of like a real hard styrene instead of ABS or whatever the heck super plastic they're using here, something that glued together, I could glue this, I could <coughs> glue this rod there, there, and all the way across here, and then just piece it in, you know, cut this off, cut it short, piece this in, there'd be enough of a bridge to go all the way across and the whole deal, but <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna have to take a pause on this for a bit and really think it through, because you know, once you start cutting into all this or whatever, it's it's the game over for that chassis, for sure. Well, it already is anyway. But at least I can still kind of salvage this into the Porsche if need be, you know. But, I don't know, like all this stuff, eh? the extra, the springy thing in here and all that. I'm trying to clear the, the front axle from hitting the spring thing and all this. Like if this was an old day slot car, this would all be, uh, make up a brass tube frame and the whole thing and just mount all this in here. Have this, have the, uh, this thing just being the blade with the pickups off the front and then Bob's your uncle, you know, and that's it. And I don't know. Just have to see what I can do, I guess. So here we have our undercarriage here from the Porsche slot car. And I put the chip back in because I need to figure out the difference here in the wheelbase on our body. So I'll just move this out of the way for a second. Now I brought back the Porsche body here, and if we actually see, if I put the front wheel arches together, so that you got that there, you can see in the back here uh, just how much difference it is in this section. The uh, Back to the Future car, of course, being quite a different from this wheel arch on the porch. Porsche. Porch. But anyway. So, yeah, you can pretty much see that this is further ahead than this wheel arch. All this flaring around here sort of makes it a little difficult to see, but maybe you can see it there lining up. So here's, and the other thing about this is the height difference between here and here. And if you, if I put them sort of wheel arch top to wheel arch top, I don't know. You can see that the Porsche is sitting down like quite a bit with that body. So this is a lot taller here than there. So unfortunately, the undercarriage, of course, doesn't line up to the wheel arch because you can see in the back that this wheel is going out this way more. So what I need to do again, it's just, oh, I, I had the uh, chip just sitting here loosely because I need to remove some of the plastic in this area here. I think I've decided to uh, take it off. So I wanted to see where the chip sits. I know I got this little crooked here. But just see where the chip sits so that if I remove something I'm not removing like in here so that the chip is exposed or anything. So it seems to rest on that little tab there that's sticking out. I don't know how well you can see that. And then behind here we've got a little space and then there's this wall that goes across and then there's like a little flat spot there. So if I cut just behind the wall here and then just 
right at the edge of this flat spot and remove the wall and flat spot. Then this is a piece of a styrene squared solid square. Um, I don't know if you want to call it tubing. Tubing usually refers to a hole in the middle of it. But I'm going to take the distance from there to there using our little points. So that would fit behind here and here. So what I'm going to do is use this as a bridge. I'm going to drill... I'll take the wheels and that off. I'm going to drill a hole going down this way. Because there's a little black wall there with the uh, body. And drill another hole this way. And then I'm going to drill a couple of holes there and there and there and there. I've decided to use model railway train nails. Those are HO scale. They are little teeny nails, but they'll have a head. So I'll crazy glue all this together because I discovered with some of the scraps here that I cut off from before, I glued them together with crazy glue. They are not coming off of there in any way, shape or form. So what I can do is drill some holes in there, pin this all together, crazy glue the bottom of it. It should give us enough strength there and there so that if this thing hits the ground or something, which I hope it never does, it won't... Uh, split the car right in half, you know? <laughs> so that's how I'm going to try to tackle this thing. So now I'm going to go down. Just going to shut the camera off, but I'm going to take my Atlas saw and just saw this thing in half and then cut this down the distance that I removed out of here and then piece it all back together. Now wait, before I go sawing like a crazy guy, <laughs> There's one other thing. This big hole is actually for the primary magnet to hold the car down to the track. So what I've noticed here is with this, um, the gauge right there, if I move this down here, there's that um, bolt sort of arrangement right there. There's a bit of flat plastic along the top of that bolt head there. That's actually the same distance as there. So I can take the saw, saw this part off here, along there, get rid of that little bit, and then take my hobby file and knife and come across in here till I get down to there. And it should be enough to fit the magnet back in once this area gets reduced. So I'll give it a try and see how it all goes. And here's our slot car chassis cut into three pieces. Uh, just two cuts, really. So this is the section that I'm removing there, just to make the wheelbase line up a lot better. See, my cuts were pretty square, considering that this comes on perfectly without any, uh, you know, weird gaps or twists or anything. So what I'll do is I'll screw down the wheels and everything and then try this sectionally into our body. And if everything works out right, I will cut down the white runner and then make it fit in here. And like I said, with the nails and everything, try to make this all hook together nicely. So here's our DeLorean upside down on the body. And there's the back end. And now the front end. And you can see I pretty much got this perfect. Okay, now if I tilt this up this way, I know it's a little bit dodgy right now because the <laughs> this has to be glued together as one solid piece. But you can see that just by cutting that bit out of there, once we reattach the two, okay, just gotta hold it nicely. The wheelbase lines up. So I think I pretty much got that. All it needed was just to take this section out. And now the interesting part will be trying to glue this all back together to make this one solid frame. So like I said, I'll be drilling some or a hole in either end of these little bits. Cutting this down just that little bit, drilling a hole in there and there. And then putting in those model railway nails, crazy gluing, and everything else. So that's what I'll do now and then come on back.
Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River flood, and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is... Repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now! In case you're wondering, these are the model railway spikes that I'm talking about. As you can see, they've got a little riveted head on there. So these should be about the right size to put into the underneath of that car without them actually scraping on the track. So that's why I'm considering using these. I just have one side of this pinned together right now. One thing I noticed is that I actually did not have to cut this in because here's the box for the magnet and as you can see it still drops perfectly into that hole so i think what i'll do is i'll crazy glue the bottom piece of this magnet in the magnet holder into place just to strengthen up along here where we need it the most and uh okay so what i've done is i put the little pin head into there yeah, you can see that. And then one there. And now this, if everything works right, should not drag that pin onto our wheels, which of course it doesn't. So there we go. Now, I have not put in the pins going this way yet. What I think I will do is put the other one of these white pieces in here, glue it all together, and then as a reinforcing bonus afterwards, drill in the holes and then put in a couple of those nails. So that'll just give it some extra support along there, make it a little bit better. Anyway, there we go. I do believe the magnet actually goes this way. Yeah, so there it is. So I'll continue on that and then glue it all together. Here we are with the frame glued together and the nails put in. I made sure that was nice and flat across there and there. I also added glue around here, like I said, to the bottom of the magnet box. And what I did is with some of the excess that I cut off from before, I cut it into little strips and I glued the strip across the crack that's here. So there's crazy glue all around in here crazy glue underneath there, on the ends, into the nail heads, and everything else. So this is a really rigid frame now. It's actually just as tough as it would be if it was still made in one piece. So I gotta admit I did this really well. <laughs> okay, now with everything being said, this should line up whoops with the wheels into our body getting some rainy weather out there so I think what I might do as well is cut a strip of thin sheet styrene and glue it from here wrap it around the front here and then glue it over to there just to give a nice sort of air dam look and something up the back here because uh, as you recall when this is put together there's a big gap because this body pan wants to just drop straight out but now that I know how well that crazy glue works <laughs> well I think I could put anything on here Oops, so let's just seat our engine in. And one right there. Oops. OK. 
Okay. Oh, and here's our magnet. As you can see, it'll just drop straight in there. Nice and easy. Now, there's our, whoops, our wheel base. <laughs> there goes the magnet. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's why I put a cover on it. All right, I got this a little tight into the body, but we can always play with that later. But there's our wheels, right in the wheel wells, going around perfect there. I'm going against gear in the motor, but yeah, that's our body. So like I said, now I can take a sheet of styrene, glue it around, where are we here? Glue it around here so that this bottom piece covers up a little nicer. And then an angled one up in the back here, around and back there, just so that this looks somewhat nicer. Now the interesting part is going to be mounting this body together onto that Porsche frame. Oh, here's some lightning. But in the end, this should look pretty decent. Okay. And there's our car there with the wheels in the proper wheel well openings. What I've done here is I put all our components back into our chassis. Um, those long screws go in the front here and the shorter ones in the back. I had them the other way around and that's because there's a clip here and then there's the metal thing for this screw underneath to screw it into your display case. I got this back in. I pushed that wire through first before putting the chip back in. So now this is holding that magnet all in place. And in case you're wondering what the clearances are underneath, here's a piece of track that I have. This is kind of a damaged track. But anyway, uh, there's the, you can see the magnet hanging down right under there. But it's got enough clearance under the track so that the wheels can move around, which is nice. Actually, I guess this is the straightest piece of track, but there you go. So that's all together. And that body just drops nicely right on there as if it was the proper DeLorean made from Carrera. I'm really quite happy with how I got all this together and that nothing major is messed up or anything. So now the next part of this is to get this body mounted onto the chassis somehow. And you just reach in and pop that on. Okay, so I've figured out what I'm going to do next as my next approach here. I'm not going to cut this front bit, but I am going to cover it. Somewhere I know I've got a sheet of black styrene. Somewhere. Uh, I might, you know, reshape this a little in the front. Um, but I'm going to try to find or cut a piece of plastic. Oops. See how there's this big gap? This is at an angle. Well, there's this nice big flat piece of bumper underneath here. And what I'll do is find a sheet or a piece of styrene that will bridge this gap at the right point, or even, you know, measure it using my tools there. And I'm going to glue it or put it in here and glue it across so that the chassis will come in and hit that and give enough clearance for these tires so they're not dragging on the top of the wheel arches even if that's like a sixteenth of a millimeter. <laughs> but still, this once it's all together, it should look nice. Now, like I was saying before, I don't think I can put in the full interior into this because I'm going to hit all the engine and the chips and everything like that, right? But what I'm thinking is, on our interior panel here, I'm going to saw it off along here, drop off the where you're sitting, this actually isn't the interior. This is the back piece in the windows there. So I'm going to do it up like that. And then I'm going to take that clear piece of glass, paint it black on the inside so it still looks like glass on the outside, but you can't see all this, you know, the wiring and all that junk <laughs> to make this thing go. And then it's all just going to be a nice outer body paint job on this to make it look like the movie DeLorean. 
But yeah, those the, those wheels are pretty big and beefy in comparison to uh, what the real DeLorean was. However, I kind of like this styling. It's interesting that they use a blue on the one side and red on the other. That was from the Porsche. I do think, you know, for this car, even though these wheels are completely wrong and everything, I do like the blue better. There's just something about it. Interesting it's got Carrera on one side. Oh, I see why. This tire got put on backward. Okay, I'll flip it around so that Carrera is on the outside. Uh, however, with that being said, you could also have, if you want to pull the tires off and turn them, you can have all black wall. So they just peel off like this and go back on. Er, and with a little bit of encouragement, there we go. Yeah. So now look, this should look quite nice once it's done. Okay, so I'll figure out height in here and then make it so that this thing will just drop nice straight on. Then I'm not sure about, you know, body screws or how I'm going to, like, actually attach the body. But anyway, it should work. If I got this figured out, I can figure out how to put the body on. Okay, so I'll start mucking with that. So to continue on with our Back to the Future project, we're going to look at the, some of the parts we don't need and some of the parts that we do need off our parts tree. These are the parts basically that we're not really going to need, but there are some in here. So to start off with, the chassis we're not going to need because that's in the slot car kit. These are the rods that go into here to raise the car up for that hover appearance. These are all our wheel and hover components in here. We've got our interior seats. Now we're going to use the back part of this, but not the actual interior. So we're going to saw it off in here. And then we're not going to use the um, Mr. Fusion, but we're going to use the original parts. And that's on this tree. So I'm going to cut off this from our parts tree and saw this in half. Now let's take a look at the rest. So these are the components that we are going to use for the most part, except for interior components. So that would be our dashboard, our steering column, our inner door panels, the interior upper console, and anything else. Oh, the little clock. And I think that's it for that. The exterior pieces that we do need, though, are the outer uh, vents here for our chillers, and then the electric piece over the top. The wires, the front bumper, those side pieces for the lightning to shoot through, the piece that goes up in the front, and then these are also on the front sides. It's all part of our electrical system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip out the parts that we need and I'm going to clean them up and get them all ready for paint. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for a great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, found on YouTube, and I'll leave the link in the description below. Here we have our painted items for our Back to the Future car. And I didn't really want to get into a big here's how to paint it, um, type video on this since I've already covered that ground on our die cast restoration. So as you can see I painted in a lot of the panels in the back. These are quite different in detail from the die cast version uh, reviewed earlier. Of course here's our rear exhausts or whatever they are that would plug into here and here. There's our front bumper component and this goes along the top of the car with these runners off the side. This is up under the front. We've got a couple of our hoses that would attach to the sides of these. 
and go into the wall back here. Our crossover pipe going here to here. And then these little components are off the front side of the car. I have to paint that wire detail on there. So far I've just got it in yellow. But, you know, as you can see, we've got all our panels in. We've got our uh, nuclear reactor thing here. It's not too bad, but it is quite simplified for the snap-together components of the car. There's our rear uh, things. <laughs> Flex chillers or whatever they are. Uh, there's our front bumper. So I've painted the blue in there plus the aluminum panels on it. Overall, it's not too bad. There's a little top piece. Just pull here. I don't know. <laughs> Overall, I don't think it's too bad. I mean, it does represent the car pretty well. And once we get it all together with all the extra components, it should look quite nice. Now, I had a little bit of a delay in progress on our slot car here because I was trying to figure out a way to get this AMT body to mount on the Carrera frame. And now seeing that the Carrera car was originally this Porsche and has this great big drop in the side of the body to accommodate those massive wheels. And uh, here's our die cast DeLorean. And as you can see, the wheels are quite small in comparison to our Porsche, right? Now, of course, I got this up a bit closer. So there they are side by side. I had to come up with a way to mount our AMT body onto that frame. And w without actually having the wheels punch right up through the hood, because <laughs> that would be what would happen if I tried to get the frame tight in like it is on our die cast. So I had to make a compromise. And I hope that this is going to be all right, because really there's no other way to do it. So what I needed to do was glue in strip styrene here, and then glue in a block of styrene up in the back to get this to touch the body. And as you can see, it's at a bit of an angle in here, and that will seat on the angle of this rear bumper. Because, you know, when you take this away, like the original screw holes for, of course, our Porsche have equal mountings underneath, so that's not a problem when it's on the Porsche. But again, like, like I said, we had to shorten this by cutting it in half here and gluing those green strips in. So why should the back be any different? So this is the solution I came up with. And as you can see, there's nothing to mount this on except for a little bit of plastic here and here. As for the front, we just have this little strip here, which sits across the screws and the mounts here. And then here, of course, you can see what I needed to do in order to get us some height. So what I used was this, I do believe it's 0250. This is from Evergreen Styrene. It's a square block. And I cut these one centimeter high from the black plastic up. And then these long ones I cut two centimeters long. They are... Everything is crazy glued on the bottom here. It's sitting on the little mounting bits that were part of what I cut off here, the tubes from the Porsche, and all the rest. And what I will do is take my sanding block and sand this nice and smooth now that the glue is dried. And then I'm going to go across this way to, because you can see this is square and I had to mount it at a bit of an angle. So when it comes up to the body again, Now see how nice this will fit, right? Still got to spread the body sides a little bit. But again, fits nice up in there. Problem is that this square bit is sticking out like this. So what I need to do is take my sandpaper down this way and kind of hold it up against the edge of the flat plastic and sand down until this little corner comes off and it's nice and flat. Then what I'll do is take other styrene sheet and I will glue it in to make a curtain here. 
across there and across the back and across there and maybe a wrap up around the front just to go in underneath the body a bit better. I cannot cut any more of this away because I'll start cutting into our spring-loaded bit for the slot car track. But overall, I mean, I think I've done a... I think I solved this. I think I've got it as a good job if we mount this properly. The right direction front and back. The front wheels will spin freely, as will the back. This is a little tougher because it's going against the engine. Pardon me, the motor. And in order to secure this down, what I'm going to use instead of screws, I'm going to use two-sided carpet tape. It has a really, really adhesive backing on it, on both sides, because it's double-sided. And once I get this sort of perfected out, I can put a strip of carpet tape on here and here, as well as here, I guess, and one across here. And then when that body goes down on it, it will stick into the carpet tape and it'll give you a nice solid adhesion just as powerful as screws and then if you ever need to fix the motor in here you can easily just pull and pull and pry it off the tape should come with it I'll also include for you uh, not the viewing audience but my customer that's watching this I'm going to include some of that tape as well a couple of ribbons of it then if you ever need more you're on your own but at any rate it should all work and then all I need to do after this is of course paint the glass flat black on the inside so it's still shiny on the outside so you don't see all the wires and components because I can't fit the interior in here because of how high the motor sits and how the interior is and all the rest. And then of course all the back to the future bits like the time machine circuitry and whatnot will be sitting in the back here. I was going to try to mask and spray paint like up and around like how it is on the uh, car here down below, the die cast. But I don't think I'm going to be able to properly do that. So instead, I'm going to mask in here and just use a brush. I know it's not the best. Same as around the back here where it's supposed to be the lighter gray. It's just too cold right now in Alberta to spray bomb. And even then, I mean, we're going to be looking at a couple extra months. And it's already been a long time, as, it, as you know. <laughs> we want to get this project done. Uh, the other thing is when I make the curtain around there, all this white will be painted black so it'll disappear. I know it's going to look a bit heavy, it won't look as sleek as the die cast and all nice and tight together, but it will end up looking more like the Porsche with the long tall bottom down here. But again, I mean, what can we do? We're, we're experimenting, we're converting, uh, and that's sort of just the way it goes. Here's our slot car chassis after we've added on the back piece here and sanded it to the contour of the back pan. And now, as you can see, as I bring this up into the camera, you can see the nice roll that I put in here. I did this all with that sandpaper block. And now it looks pretty good. Uh, what we'll be able to do in our next video is show you how to take our plastic and wrap it around this back so that it fills in the back splash panel. But you may be wondering how the body looks as you pop it into place. Well, let's just take a look here. Just gotta expand that out a little bit. So now, we have a pretty solid fit here on the front. And as we turn it around, you can see that the wheels are now aligned really nicely with that body. There. <laughs> Those, of course, are under a little bit of friction. But look at the back end here. Everything seats really nicely up against that bumper. We just have to uh, cover up the ugliness of this and hide it so that we get more of that long, deep profile of our Porsche-type racer to cover up the edges of our DeLorean here. So we need to make the little piece that covers in here and here, and we'll be good to get ready for painting. 
And that's what we'll take a look at in part three. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where we got to show you more of our amazing Back to the Future slot car conversion. And if you want to see more of these videos in the future, great Scott, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and pound that notification button, Marty, so that every time we make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, everybody, happy slot car racing wherever you are. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address www.monster-hobbies.ca Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... it We are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building. <laughs>